so many people across the world want to move to London. In today's episode, I'm going to discuss how much we end up spending per month for the household living and working in London. I am putting out a lot of my personal finances here online. This is definitely not easy for me. It's the first time I'm doing something like this. But then I always believe in transparency around money. So I hope that this helps you plan in case you are moving to London. I have seen quite a few videos like this on YouTube and I really enjoy watching these videos but I haven't found many where people are discussing their household expenses and how much it costs to live as a family in London. Before starting out a few things about us we are a family of three my husband and I both have corporate jobs and we technically don't live in London meaning that we don't vote for the London mayor elections but we are still within M25 which means that we are within the city boundary. I used to commute to London every single day before the pandemic I still go into the city twice a week. So here's how I plan to discuss this. I'll go from the lowest expense, that's recurring every month, to the highest recurring expense every month. I'll also categorize these into needs and wants. And I'll also explain if that expense has any child component to it. At the end of the video, I will tell you how much we spend on our needs versus wants and how much you can expect to spend if you don't have children. So without further ado, let's get started. The first item on the list are our telephone bills. We spend about £20 a month on our telephone bills on a recurring basis. This is an absolute need for I believe most of us. The next one is charity expenses. Last month we spent about £25 towards charitable donations. This by no means is a need. This is a want. The next on the list is our internet bill where we spend about 40 quid a month. This is an absolute need because both of us end up working from home a lot. The next on the list is clothing. We spent £40 last month on clothing we generally don't tend to spend that much on clothing it was a weird month with school starting next month so we typically would budget about 20 to 25 pounds for clothing for the child as adults and since we've been living in the uk for a long time we generally don't tend to buy new clothes ever other than some very specific things that we need but then if you are new to london it's probably worthwhile to budget about 40 pounds for your clothing because you might need to shop for certain pieces that are suitable for this climate and for us this is a very child specific expense as adults we probably wouldn't have spent that much if you have young children i highly recommend that you budget something for their clothes the next on the list is our water bill, which is about 50 pounds a month. This is an absolute necessity, so you have to pay it, you need water. The next on the list is hiring help. I have a cleaning lady who comes in a couple of times a month and we pay her about 50 pounds for that. So this is a real want rather than a need, but we definitely feel like that helps us buy back some of our time. Next up on the list are pharmaceutical bills. This would include your toiletries, your medicines, your vitamins, creams and lotions and things like that so we spend about 50 pounds per month on it i consider most of this a necessity some people might argue but i believe that vitamins etc we should really regularly have and therefore i categorize this as a need of course if you have children this increases and if you are just by yourself make suitable adjustments to it next up on the list are toys i have spent about 50 pounds in toys last month this is definitely a want rather than a need well actually some part of it is is probably a need and there are a lot of people probably judging me right now spending 50 pounds a month on toys and I totally get your judgment however we don't let our child a lot of screen time so I would rather that they play with toys than with the screen and this is something that I don't feel too guilty about if you don't have children you can absolutely remove this category the next on the list are gifts and this is definitely a recurring expense that I have been noticing on my credit cards for the last few months and this is mostly gifts for other children who are my child's friends or my friend's children and so on. With the life stage that I'm in, this expense is not going away anywhere anytime soon. So this is definitely something that you might want to consider if you have a social life in London. The next on the list are subscriptions and I have two specific big subscriptions. The first one is my child swimming lessons and the next one is my own swimming practice. So that comes out to about 70 quid a month. Only for the child, it's about 40 pounds a month. I would categorize this as a want rather than a need, but then actually I believe that children should also have some physical activities and swimming is a life skill. So in my mind, this almost comes towards being a need 
but I totally get it. This is absolutely not a necessary expense. The next category I spend a lot of money on are books and book related subscriptions. For example, an Audible subscription or short form subscription. And I'm big on books. So if you are interested in a short form subscription and want to get 20% off in a free trial, I'll put a link in the description box below that you can use to get a discount. But I tend to spend about 70 pounds a month on books and learning related activities. And out of that 70 pounds, 20 pounds is because of the child. So I categorize this as a want, but actually for children, this probably tends to needs. The next category is eating out. We tend to spend about 200 pounds a month eating out. We tend to at least eat out once a week, more likely twice a week, sometimes even more than that. I include my lunches when I go into office into this category as well. So that's 200 pounds and I categorize that as a want rather than a need. Next one on the list are energy bills. This has significantly gone up in the past few months. We end up spending about 200 pounds a month on gas and electricity. This is definitely a need but the prices don't seem to be coming down so that's something you want to budget to. The next on the list is our council tax. Because we live in the commuter belt and not in London, our council tax is a bit on the higher side. We pay about £20 on council tax every month. The next one on the list is commute. I live in the London commuter belt. I don't live in zone one or two in London and therefore my commute costs are a bit higher. On an average every month we spend about £225 on commute. Out of that about 120 or 130 is because of train tickets and the rest would be fuel costs for the car. And if you have a car you probably want to add another line item to your budget as a recurring car payment expense. We have paid off our car loan so we don't need to consider that but that definitely used to be a category that we paid a lot of money to every month before we paid it off. And with commute I would categorize this as a need rather than a want because I do have to go into London to work. The next on the list are groceries. And this of course is a need. We spend about 285 pounds a month on groceries. The next category of expense is childcare costs. We spend about 720 pounds on childcare. This could go up or down based on whether you are eligible for free childcare and how much of that free childcare you are entitled to. This also obviously depends on the age of your child and how many children you have. If you don't have children, you don't have to consider this as a cost, but if you you have children this is something that's worth paying attention to. In our case this is absolutely a necessity because both of us work during the day. And finally no prizes for guessing what's the highest line item that we pay most of our expense to. It's our mortgage bill. We pay about 1500 per month on our mortgage currently. We live in a three bed house so it is quite good considering our housing situation. However we are due for a remortgaging at the end of the year. I let you know how that goes so that 1500 is probably going to significantly go up but you don't necessarily need to buy your place you can rent one you don't necessarily need a three bed you can look for a two bed or even a one bed if you are by yourself or some flat sharing agreements and in fact I have previously done a video on whether it's better to buy or rent I'll link that video up here if you want to go have a look go have a look at that one after finishing this video. Overall, how much did we spend? We spent about 3,350 on our needs and about 525 pounds per month on our wants. That brings up the total to 3,875 a month. This is how much we spend almost every single month to live a quiet, comfortable life. However, if I just stripped out the childcare costs, you would be looking at 2,965 pounds because child-related costs were worth about 910 pounds so if you don't have children, you can budget to spend about £3,000 per month for two people in the household. And of course, both of us have our jobs, which is why there are places where we splurge. And if you didn't want to splurge as much, you could probably remove that £525 of wants category from that entire bill. So there you have it. Let me know in the comments below. Are you planning to move to London soon? And what will you be doing? I probably can help out to negotiate better salaries and also finding a higher paying 
training job in London. I link down the replay to my job search hacks video in the description box where I discuss the five things that make you a respected expert in your industry and lets you command that high salary. One that you definitely need when you work and live in London. And I get it, London is an expensive city to live in, especially with family. So you definitely do want to increase that salary. Otherwise, you don't end up saving as much and investing as much, which means that you have less money for your retirement when you are less able to work, which is not ideal. So I hope that video was illuminating in some ways and helped you make a decision on how much you want to budget when you move to London. Or if you want to move to London after looking at those expenses, let me know in the comments below. And if you like this episode, please hit that subscribe button. It does really help the channel out a lot and motivates me to create these videos. And if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy something like this or this that I'll link up here and I'll see you the next time. Bye.